Hello everyone, welcome to Azaz, that's Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho, uh, where we here at Zanata take your Zoho questions and spin them into solid gold. This is volume number two, issue number five. Uh, I am joined here by the illustrious Lucas Santana, one of our uh, senior uh, consultants here at Zanata. Very happy to have you. Uh, we've got to be here. Yeah, uh, we've got a uh, fun question for you today, Lucas, uh, awesome. that is going to delve into uh, writing some simple automations uh, for updating uh, values in different records. Uh, so let's go ahead and read that question. So over in Club Zanata, Christina Nunez uh, writes us, I am new in Zoho, just learning. I'm trying to update the stage field in my deals module whenever the stage changes in a pick list in a custom module. I tried using the Coquel code, Coquel code here, which uh, the Coquel code that she's referring to was uh, a post that yours truly had made over in Club Z for updating related records. Uh, and the function works, but is not the outcome that I need. Is there a simple way to accomplish this? Mind you, I don't know Deluge and I don't want to use Flow. Thank you very much. Uh, so it sounds like for uh, Christina here uh, that you know, the, the example that I uh, gave was one of where you're updating a parent record and you want all the child records uh, updated accordingly. Uh, it sounds like hers is more of a uh, like a one to one. It's actually the other direction, right? It's she's updating a record that has a lookup field to uh, a deal and so she wants when the child record is updated the parent deal gets updated uh, yeah. and so I did give you this uh, question a little bit ahead of time Lucas so I think you actually have some uh, some code that you can demonstrate for us yes yes sir so uh, just uh, just walking through the setup here so this is uh, our test environment and we have a deal that's currently on the stage needs work and uh, we have, you can see here, we have an associated work order that's currently inactive uh, and the work order is here. And uh, yeah, you can see here it has, this is a child record from the deal uh, associated with it. And it has a pick list for status that you can choose here. And uh, what, uh, what Christina asked was uh, something that you can alter a pick list in one record and change it in another related record. And uh, uh, I'll first demonstrate it and then I'll show you uh, the code to make it, uh, yeah, to make it work. So right now we have it, it's status inactive. Whenever I change it to something like in progress, uh, we want to change the status on the deal. And I set it up to change the status on the deal to uh, needs analysis. So uh, when we refresh our deal, we'll see that the stage has moved to needs analysis. And uh, if we change the status to completed, we can move our deal all the way to closed one. Uh, you see, we have to refresh a page. The uh, automation is working on the back end, so it doesn't uh, auto uh, populates it in there. But the state is set to closed one. And the way we the way we do it is we need first we need to create an automation that comes from the worker module itself. So this is uh, one example. Uh, this is an, a workflow function. Whenever you create, you're going to have some types of functions, uh, button, standalone, related list. This is one of the workflow, uh, the workflow ones. And all you need to do is set first, you set the arguments here as uh, for, uh, in this case, work order, but would be your uh, custom module name uh, and the ID. We want to do it like this because we don't want to pass a lot of parameters to this function. We just want to pass one ID and then we grab the underlying information for it uh, through uh, an API call. So we just I just gave it the work order ID. And from here, uh, I'm doing a couple of things. So first, I'm getting the full record. So this is the JSON representation of this work order record. Uh, and you can see it in uh, you can see it in here. So this info statement is just a debug statement that will show up under the console here. So you see the object uh, printed in the uh, in the console. Uh, the next thing we do is we get the work order status and the deal uh, that is related to it. And in here, we start with our first null check and maybe a criteria check 
So I just want to make changes to the the deal record if the work order status is in one of those statuses here. So if it's either in progress or completed, and I just want to make uh, adjustments to the deals if there is a deal associated with it, right? So this is the first big important thing that we see break all the time, right, Greg? So this absolutely, is one big, yeah. This is one big uh, one big takeaway this uh, in this video. Use null checks everywhere you can, especially when you're getting stuff from other maps. So you don't uh, like your air, your code doesn't break. Yeah, if you're ever dealing with a with a lookup yeah. field, this is where this is where you want this because the way that Zoho stores a lookup fields information on the back end is uh, it it has a a map an object that has inside of it the ID of the related record and the the name of the related record. So yeah. if you so you always have to. You have to go two levels down, right, to get the ID of the record that you want to get. So you would have to do, uh, so I get my work order, then you have to get the deal field, then get the ID inside of the deal field. And the problem is, if there is no deal in there, then when you try to get the ID of something that isn't there, that's when your code would break. And so that's why, that's why you've got that null check going. Exactly. And we have an example to show here. So this is the actual object, the underlying object for the work order. And you can see here, if we scroll all the way down, the deal object in here is also an object itself. So as you can see, this is a, a JSON object and it has a name, as Greg said, grave name and ID. And we well, what we want here now is the ID because this is what we reference inside of the code to make changes to uh, two records inside of uh, using API calls. So uh, going back to the code, we we check that that deal object is not empty, uh, it's not null. And uh, first thing we do, we get the ID from the record, and now we do uh, a simple check. So I'm uh, initializing a deal map. We're going to use it to update our deal. Uh, and in the deal map, if the or, uh, work quarter status is in progress, we're going to set it to needs analysis. And if it's uh, incompleted, we're going to change it to closed one. So all you need to do, just set it up in here. If you have more data you want to change on the deal itself based on criteria, or if you have any other fields uh, other than stage, so you have stage and maybe you have amount or you have a probability or something like that, uh, you can change it in here as well. And then uh, last but not least, we do uh, an update on the deal itself. And uh, this is what will actually get the deal stage to change. So this is the API call that on the back end is changing the stage on the deal to one of those values in here. And then this is just another debug statement. And I'm going to show you how you can run this in this environment so you can test it out. So as you can see here, we need a, an ID. So we can grab uh, ID from the record and it's under, at the top here, you see the CRM organization the name of the module, in this case, is just the custom module. So it just show custom module 16, and then a big string of numbers, 19 numbers. And this is what you want. This is the ID. So we copy paste that in here, and we just gonna click uh, save and execute. It's going to pop up this window where we can place our ID here, and then we just click save. And after we do that, you see on the right here, we'll have the work order object that we uh, that we infoed. This is the, for debugging purposes. So you see if there's anything wrong with your, with your data, you see it in here. And then we're also uh, debugging and uh, printing in, this, uh, in the screen. We're print, printing the update deal response just so we know that everything went right. So uh, it gave me back a modified time, so everything went right. Uh, the uh, work order was in the completed stage, so the deal should be in the closed one stage. So if we want, uh, we can just go back to, for example, needs order, and we'll go back uh, to the record. We can change it in here to in progress, for example, and then uh, the automation will run on the back end uh, and update the deal itself. And you'll be able to see everything inside the timeline. So you see what it changed from needs order to needs analysis anytime. So this, th these are our friends. So you keep track of uh, everything that happened. Uh, so this is part one. The code is what is going to drive uh, the, the the state change and all that. 
but we also need to set up a trigger, right? We need to set up an event that will make uh, that will make this uh, push uh, effectively. That will make this uh, move forward. So to do that, something we, that is uh, effectively doing the save and execute on your behalf. Yeah, <laughs> instead exactly. of uh, you having to do that every time, because it kind of defeats the purpose if you're having to click save and execute whenever you wanted this to happen. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Or if you need to click a button somewhere. It kind of like defeats the purpose of you changing it somewhere and having it automatically mm -hmm. changing somewhere else. So uh, what we need to set up here is a workflow rule. And this one is a simple, uh, simple one. And uh, we can create one. I already pre-created it, but uh, I'll, I'll just show it to you. So the, the rule, I call the change deal status and work order status update. Big name. Uh, but uh, what I did here was I created to execute this workflow based on a record action. And the record action could be any of these. So it technically could even be on deletion of a record, you can uh, change uh, something. So these are the kind of like the events that will prompt your uh, your function to run. And uh, I click this box to repeat this workflow whenever uh, an order uh, work order is added. Meaning if I change this once and it changed to in progress and I change it again, I want it to run this workflow again. That's all it's saying. Uh, so I set this and it gives me this whenever you need to be very careful with this. If you're changing, uh, the same field over and over, it could be, it could give you an infinite loop. So just be aware whenever you do that, that you're changing, uh, that what you're changing, is not causing this function to run again. So just uh, this in mind, uh, I set some conditions in here. I don't want this to run every time the record is edited. I just wanted to, uh, run it every time the record is edited and the status is in progress or completed. That's all, that's when I want to, to run this function. And then in here, we, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll show it in here. So this is the function. And, uh, another thing you're going to need to do, uh, remember you set this argument here for work order ID. Now you need to map this to the actual work order ID. And the way you do that is in here, this is going to come out a blank when you first start it. So this is going to be blank. And all you need to do is press, uh, let me uh, remove this first. So all you need to do is press the, the hashtag sign, the pound sign, and uh, it will show this add merge field portion. You'll choose work orders, and then the field, you're gonna choose work order ID, click done and save. And uh, after you save this, now your workflow is in order and you'll be able, like, whenever you make changes to a work order, if it's in one of those uh, one of those statuses, it's going to make changes in your deal for you. Wow, Lucas, thank you so much for uh, putting that together and showing us. Uh, so, Christina, uh, if you're, uh, I hope you're watching this. Uh, this is this is for you. We made this for you, uh, especially for you. Yeah, especially for you. Um, I know that uh, this this might not seem as uh, as simple as perhaps uh, you uh, would have wanted. Uh, but uh, once you, I, I can assure you that once you start making your uh, first Deluge code, you're gonna find it much easier to make your second or your third. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of all uh, the, what Lucas showed of you set up a function where you get your record, you pull out whatever information you need, and then you update whatever records you need to update uh, and then associate those to some kind of automation trigger. Uh, any parting thoughts, Lucas? Yeah, it's pretty much uh, if like this, you can expand this idea to a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So you, you start simple like this. This is just, uh, you're getting a related record. Uh, you're updating a stage on it. That's great. But then you, you can start to make it more and more complex. That's when you uh, start seeing the full power of the automation that you can uh, that you can build here. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, late Lucas, thank you once again for, uh, uh, being here today. Uh, really appreciate your help, uh, as I'm sure does Christina. Well, that'll do it for us here at Azaz this week. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, as always, if you want to meet with our Zanata team, uh, just head over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting and you'll be able to meet with one of us. Yeah, and if you go to Zanata.com, you'll be able to find our resource library. You can uh, sign up to our newsletter. Uh, you can go to Club Z, find out your our codes, events, and news, 
And if you uh, choose to uh, give a, our training a shot, you can train your team in less than a week, which is great. And as always, we would appreciate a like and subscribe here on our YouTube channel, uh, as well as following us on your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next time. Nice work, Lucas. Fun stuff. Good. It's, yeah. it's good to deluge. Just feels good. It's good to deluge. Yeah. After you get a hang of it, it's kind of addicting. Yeah. It is. Why?